Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says that, do not be conformed to, work, to the pattern of this world. Because it is those information that you expose yourself to that entered your mind. That, that is what made you to be conformed to the system and the pattern of this world. So the moment you give your life to God, what do you do? Your emotion, your mind need to change. So those information that you allow to enter your mind, they need to be brainwashed. That is why they say that they brainwash them. Yes, they need to be a brainwash. So those things that entered your mind, they have to jettison out. You have to allow them to go and allow the real one that makes you a child of God to enter your mind. That is why if you check this earth now, the leading church are the church that be, are knowledge-based church. Because even after the deliverance you get here, even after the money you get, if you do not, if you do not know, if you do not have knowledge how to sustain it, you will lose it. You get your deliverance, you do not have knowledge how to sustain your deliverance, you do what? You will lose it. That is why some of these churches that deal with, with the deliverance, like Martin and you go there, sometimes they teach you, they have a section of teaching. Those teachings is the teaching you, feeling you, what they are doing is this. They are uprooting those things, those things that you are allowed to enter your mind, and they are putting in the right one, so that after the deliverance section, you are expected to start living according to what they feed your mind with. That is the only way you can keep the deliverance. And that is why as a child of God, if you give your life to Christ and you don't subscribe to the word of God, that is why some of you are having challenges, living a good life. Because you, you must subscribe to the word of God. Because those things in your mind need to be jettisoned out. Then you need to now fill your mind with the things of God. That is the only way you can live a proper and a successful Christian life. That is why we plan to teach about money. The reason why we need to teach about money is this. The Bible told us that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, he said, he said that God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But that thing, that blessing was provoked. I keep telling us from verse 15. You understand? So if you can get the knowledge that these blessings I'm asking God to give me was provoked by the actions of the people of Philippians in verse 15. So all you need to do is to let me do the same thing that these people did that made them to receive this blessing. And if you can continue practicing the thing that the book of Philippians did in the verse 15, verse 19 will be a walkover. It will, it will gently pass through you. But if you declare it, you come to the you are not doing the things that you are meant to do. You must do some things to provoke some things. Praise Master Jesus. So I just want to lay that foundation that knowledge is very, very important. As long as you are in this kingdom, knowledge is very, very important. Learn to do things according to God's way. If you are a businessman, don't stop cheating. You are used to cheat when you were asked, but now that you are a child of God, stop cheating people. If you have a business deal, if someone invested 10 million in your business and you agree that when the, when the profit comes, we're going to cheer 50-50. When that profit comes, don't lie to him. Even though he did not know how much that came in, maybe you invested 10 million, 5 million came in. You decided to keep 2 million. And let us share one by five, one by five. It is, a, it is not good. It is a lie. So learn to say the right thing. If you are a youth here, you are going out with, a, with another youth, don't sleep with each other. When you get married, you have another 10, 20, 30, 40 years to sleep together, to have sex. sex with, you will have sex until you get tired. So that period of six months or one year or two or three that you are dating, don't sleep with each other. If you have been doing this, stop it. Let me tell you one of the consequences. One of the consequences is this. Both of you that are doing it, you know that you are sinning. You 
you know that you are going against the teaching of the church and teaching of this church and teaching of the, of the Bible. If you eventually get married, let's assume you traveled and somebody called you on the phone and said, I saw your wife with a man in such a place. You will believe him more because you know that your wife was not faithful when you were dating him. But if you wanted to sleep with that girl, the girl said, no way. And you know that the reason why is because, not because she don't want to be pregnant. It's just because she loved God so much. She don't want to disobey God. If someone gave from with a gossip, you say, no, this lady that I know, no. It will be difficult for you to believe that person. But if your wife or your husband have been showing unfaithfulness between both of you, anytime you hear kinds of gossip about that person, you will, you, you, you will be saying yes. I remember when we were going now, uh, she even the one that always wants it. Praise Master Jesus. I came with the teaching of prayer, but I think this is for somebody. I don't know why God took me through this way. I came with the teaching of prayer. Praise Master Jesus. So let's talk, let's use the remaining 15 minutes and talk about prayer. Definition, what is prayer? What is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer in the Bible involves the dialogue between God and people, especially his covenant people. In other words, prayer is defined as a dialogue between man and God. Dialogue between man and God. Dialogue between man and God. It means a formal discussion between two groups or countries, especially when they are trying to solve a problem. So prayer also talks about a discussion or conversation between two people. In other words, prayer is in a situation where you pray and you expect God to respond back. Don't go to pray after praying. You just you just you just walk, uh, walk out of the place without even waiting to know whether you will hear something from God. One of our fathers of faith keeps saying that anytime you are praying, make sure you have a pen and a paper. He says if you do that, God will know that you are serious, that you expect Him to speak. Say, but if you do not have anything to write with, God might see you as a man or woman that is not serious. He said that every time he prays, he prays with a pen and a paper in it. He said because God always speaks to him when he prays. So prayer has to do with the conversation between man and God. Prayer is not a monologue. So many of us are behaving that as if the prayer is a monologue. Monologue is when one person is just talking. You talk and talk and talk. when you get tired, you stop talking. You're only one person talking. The prayer has to do with the dialogue between man and God. It's a conversation between God and man. So anytime you are praying, expect God to speak back to you. If you don't expect him to speak back to you, he might never speak back to you. But when you are praying, you expect him to speak back to you. Praise Master Jesus. Let me share some examples of the prayer, our fathers of, our fathers of uh, faith. We saw Moses, Moses, uh, Exodus chapter 32. Moses in Exodus chapter 32. <clears throat> we shall not be reading all the scripture, but write, write it down. We know the, the stories about Israel. Moses went to the mountain to meet with God. And he stayed on the mountain for long. And the Israelites said, where is this Moses? We do not know where, where he has gone. Let us, move, let us look for another God. And uh, Aaron told them to bring out their shame and everything. And they, with their shame, Aaron molded a God, a golden image. And they started worshiping that golden image. Then God now told Moses to go down, that your people have now started worshiping another God. So Moses came down. God was very, very angry. He told Moses to allow him to kill this, to destroy these people, and to raise another race for, for him. So Moses dialogued with God and said, How can you do that, Father? You are the one that delivered them from Egypt. You told them that you are taking them to the promised land. If you destroy these people here, the Egyptians will think that you, do, you no longer have the power to take them, but that's why you destroyed them. So it's a dialogue. He wanted to destroy them, but Moses stood at the gap, said, no, don't do that. See the promise you gave to them. And because of that, the anger of God came down. So it was a dialogue. He dialogued with God and got anger him down. Praise Master Jesus. 
the same Moses in Numbers chapter 11 from verse 1 to 17. The Israelites, they were complaining. God gave them food, manna. And they ate and, and said, this manna self. What can this manna is? We don't like this manna anymore. After when we were in Egypt, we used to eat onions. We eat cucumber. We eat this and we eat that. So God also became angry with them. In fact, even Moses became angry also. And started accusing God. Why did he give me this food? To, why did he give me this food? God said, okay. If there are too much for you, I'm going to send you. I want you to raise 70 elders. I will take from your head the spirit I gave to you and put on them. So they will not help you to lead the people. So now it was a dialogue also. It was a dialogue that brought about 70 elders to not help Moses to lead the people of Israel. Praise Master Jesus. Number two, Joshua. Joshua chapter 7 from verse 1, from verse 1 to end. It talks about uh, Achan. Remember, the Israelites, they went to Jericho, they took over Jericho. And AI or A1 is a very, very small country. So they're supposed to outrun AI in, in one day. But they went to AI and the AI defeated them. So Joshua now became angry and he was praying unto God and said, why did this thing happen? God said that you people have taken an accursed thing. God commanded them, don't take anything from that land. Just go and destroy the land. But I can stole something from them. So Joshua now went into a conversation with God and said, why did this thing happen? God now told him the reason why. He said, okay, take away the accosting in your midst and I will be with you. That is a lesson to every one of us here. God said, take away the accosting in your midst. Take away sin. Stop living in sin. And I'll be very, very close to you. Praise Master Jesus. Number three, we saw Abraham, Genesis chapter 18. Abraham, Genesis chapter 18. You remember when God wanted to destroy the Sodom in, in and Gomorrah? This one is a very, very exciting reading. When you read it, you, will, you, know, you will marvel. You will marvel the way a man can speak to God. They had a conversation. God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Moses now told him, Father, if we can have a particular number of people that are righteous, will you destroy them? God said, no. If we can have a... If we can have 50, he said, okay, let me... How about 10 people? He said, if I can see 10 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will not destroy. It was a conversation. A prayer, ongoing conversation. And through that conversation, Moses' uh, Lord and his family were delivered. Praise Master Jesus. Number four, we saw David, 1 Samuel chapter 30, David having a conversation with God. David and the Amalekites, 1 Samuel chapter 30, David went out. By the time he came back, the Amalekites had outrun his camp. They've taken his wife, everybody. And when they came back, Moses went to dialogue with God. He said, Father, see what happened. What are we going to do? So through that dialogue, dialogue, Moses, David spoke, and God responded back. He said, do I go pursue and the He said, yes, go. So Moses asked a question through prayer, and God responded, yes, go. So you pray, you expect God to give you an answer. You speak to God, you expect a response. And Moses went, David went, and they delivered his people. The Bible said that he recovered all. Finally, Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon offered a sacrifice unto God. And after the sacrifice, God came to him for conversation. That's prayer. He said, I accepted the sacrifice. What do you want me to do for you? God spoke. And Solomon re re responded. He said, I need wisdom to rule your people. God now responded back, said that, okay, I will give you wisdom and I also give you riches. So when you pray, you expect God to respond back to you. Praise Master Jesus. So prayer has to do with conversation. As you speak, the Lord will always respond back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer is one of the greatest weapons on earth available to we believers. Prayer is the only way to, to overcome the powers of darkness. Prayer is also visiting the Father. Every time you want to pray, you go to visit God in prayer. Listen to me. The Bible, I, remember I said that we are talking about what prayer can do, right? 
what prayer can do. Let me use this uh, three minutes or five minutes to talk about what prayer can do. Number one, pray what prayer can do. We build a relationship with God through prayers. So you build a relationship. The more you come to God, always you're building a relationship. So prayer, build a relationship with God. What prayer can do? I'll be a little bit fast. We even discover God's plans and purpose for our life through prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you did not know of yourself. So call upon God. So God reveals his plans and purpose for us through prayers. Closed doors are open through prayers also. Closed doors are open through prayers. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 said, Ask and it shall be given to you. He says, Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So closed doors are open through prayers. What prayer can do? Our captivities are turned around through prayers. Your captivities are turned around through prayers. That's the one of them that prayer can do. Job chapter 42 verse 10. The Bible said, and Job captivity was turned around after he prayed for his friend. Restoration also can come to you through prayers. And the Bible said that God restored Job back double of, of what he lost. So we also, things are restored back unto us through prayers. Those are the things that prayer can do. What prayers can do? Our lost glories are also restored back to us through prayers. Our lost glories can be restored back to you through prayers. Listen to this. We pray our way out of trouble. We pray our way out of sickness. We pray our way out of challenges through prayers. James chapter 5 verse 13. He said, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. In other words, any challenge you're facing, pray. What prayer can do? We overcome temptations also through prayers. You overcome temptations through prayers. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, he said, Wash and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we overcome temptation also through prayer. So if you're facing all kinds of temptation, the Bible said that you can overcome that temptation through prayers. What prayers can do? We present our requests and petitions unto God also through prayers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. He said, do not, do not allow yourself to be troubled. No matter the challenge that you're facing, call unto God with prayers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He said, no matter the challenges that you're facing, he said, that, bring it to God in prayer. He said, but do not forget thanksgiving. He said, with thanksgiving. Praise Master Jesus. We build our confidence in God also through prayers. Your confidence in God is built through. That is why our daddy, when he talks, he talks with confidence because he's a prayerful man. Because he has settled the case with God inside. The vice president of Winners, Abioya, he said, when people come to him, he will lie and say, God bless you. Hey, I, I need a job. Go and receive the job. He said, they will come with testimony and say, uh, I, I, you don't even waste time. He said, why should I waste time with you? I've already stayed long hours with God inside there. I've settled with God, so I don't need to waste time with you. He said, how, how many hours did Jesus spend with people when he's praying for them? He said, because Jesus always spent time with God. So when it comes to man, he does not spend time with man. It is the confidence that they build in prayer. John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, he said, This is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he said that he heareth us. It is the confidence that any time we ask God in prayer that God hears us. So we build confidence in God through prayers. We are protected from evil one also through prayers. We receive wisdom from God through prayer. James chapter 1 verse 5 said that, Is there anyone of you lacking wisdom? 
say that it should come unto God. Cry unto him for wisdom, and he will grant you wisdom. Finally, it says, James chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Prayers can lock up heaven. Prayers can also unlock heaven. Elijah prayed and locked the heaven for three and a half years. And he prayed again and unlocked the heaven. The Bible said that Elijah is a man like me and you. That is what the Bible says. It said that Elijah is a man like me and you. That he prayed and God locked up heaven for three and a half years. And he then prayed again and God unlocked the heaven. So there is nothing you need on this side that prayer cannot give to you. And I pray for you that in this month of prayer, that God shall, request, God shall grant your desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever thing that you needed this year, in this month, the Lord shall grant them unto you. Amen. As I hand over the mic, the Bible told us in Psalm 68 verse 19, it said, it said that blessed be the Lord God that daily loaded us with a benefit. In other words, every day of our life, God will then benefit for us. Even in today's service, there are benefits. I pray for you. You shall not live here without your own benefit. Yeah. If you can shout seven amen, that's your benefit. You are going back home with your benefit today. Yeah.